You, you have these sort of interesting cross currents right now where, where these companies are being pressed on both sides. In fact, I would argue to you, interestingly, right. uh, you know, for a long time was a very sort of, you'd see blue state uh, pension funds and treasurers and things like that try to use their influence. And you would hear uh, from red states and, 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 and the Republican side say, you know what, those are terrible tactics. You should not be using those tactics. You should not be using your influence in those ways. And now you're seeing some of those same tactics being used on the other side. And so if you're in the middle or if you're a CEO in the middle being, you know, being the target of this, it's, it's, it's a hard place to be. Well, it can be a hard place to be, but obviously some of the Republican state treasurers and others have noticed that every single time that big bank leadership weighs in on these cultural and political and social issues, it's always on the left. And after a while, that starts to get kind of annoying, not to mention the fact that, you know, roughly half of all Americans are not on the left of the political spectrum. Um, so, look, my, my advice is... Just stay in your lane. I mean, we, we have democratic processes for addressing and trying to resolve as best we can. And, and yeah, it can be sloppy and it's not, not usually elegant, but that's how we resolve these issues. Um, the idea of having a handful of uh, senior executives somewhere make these decisions for the rest of Americans, certainly undemocratic and uh, probably in the long run not great for business because at some point, um, you know, they'll, they'll end up being treated like a public utility if they go too far down this road. Senator Toomey, I, I know what you're talking about with some of these decisions. I, I don't know that the bank CEOs have been front and center for a lot of this. The bank CEOs have gotten pressured to do things like um, get rid of any overdraft fees, make sure that they are, are lending yeah, to well, people who might not have qualified in the past. I, I don't know that that's woke politics as much as Look, some of them think it has made sense. You've had yeah. Fraser at City say it's good sense for their business. You've had Moynihan say that at Bank of America, that they're doing some of these things because it actually does jive with their customers and it helps their business yeah. from the bottom line. I don't think a lot of these CEOs yeah. have been front and center. And I think J.B. Diamond has spoken out pretty vociferously. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking yeah. about when they decide they're going to weigh in on the merits of the Georgia election law or they're going to weigh in on whether abortion should be readily available. But I don't and, think the bank CEOs have weighed gonna... in as much on a lot of those issues. Oh, ab oh, absolutely they have. They absolutely have. Many of them, not all of them, but many of them have. And they put out statements and, you know, and, and they are they're the CEOs and chairman uh, at the time they've done that. But Many of them have weighed in on those kinds of issues that are clearly have nothing to do with their core business. No, your point about having a debate about, uh, you know, uh, overdraft fees. OK, yeah, that's a business decision that you got to right. make. I think it's actually kind of ridiculous if, if there's an overdraft, that's an extension of credit. And of course, there's going right. to there's going to be a fee attached one way or another. But, but Senator, that's Senator, different. That's Senator, not what I'm let, me ask you, about. let me ask you a different question. Do you think that businesses should be involved in politics at all. So we, I live in New York City, um, and we're here in New York City right now. There's lots of questions about crime in New York City, safety in New York City, um, all of which, by the way, is not just a policing matter, but uh, has to do with the laws uh, in New York State, frankly. Yeah. And the question is, should business leaders decide, because they think it's, it's good for their business or their employees have a position, which is that they care about their safety, that they should speak out on those issues? And how does that differ from employees calling up their leaders at their businesses saying, you know what, this voting issue to me is actually something that's very, very important if I'm going to actually live in this state and work at your company? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think the, the dividing line that I would think about is the extent to which it directly affects a company. If crime is rampant around your company's headquarters, that's a really big deal. It matters. You've got to do something about it or you're going to have to leave, right? But, you know, when, when you're a company that's headquartered in San Francisco or New York City and Georgia changes its election law, and by the way, it ends up with a more liberal voting regime than New York or Delaware has, the idea that you need to weigh in on that and somehow criticize that, I, I think that is clearly outside of, uh, of but anything is this about weighing? Here's the question. But hey, it's a free country. But is it about... The statements I mean, that these companies are making that's, that, that you find troubling, is it, you know, after, after Roe v. Wade, and a lot of companies around America uh, said, you know what, uh, we will pay for employees 
yeah. who are in states that are affected uh, to be able to get uh, health care services in other states without, in many cases, without making statements, but they put those policies in place. Do you have problems with those policies? I mean, these are the questions in terms of, and how much do you want the government to be hands-on telling companies yeah, they can't look, do that versus on, right? No, no, you know, I'm not, I'm not introducing legislation, Andrew, to forbid this. this is, they are private entities. They have their own governance. They can decide what to do. I'm simply uh, suggesting that they ought to be really careful here. When they become advocates for policy that is not central to their business and that is a very divisive issue, they ought to be careful. There will be a backlash. Some of it will come from their customers. Some will come from future Congresses, probably, if this goes too far. That's my, that's my point.